Dali in 2021. They say that leaders create leaders. They arm their subordinates with intent and then step out of the way. Champion Sire exceed and excel, leaving an indelible hoofprint on the racing and breeding world. Come inside the world of Dali and see what we see. Bivouac, who explodes. Bivouac with a powerful display. Oh, what a spectacular win. Dominant four legs nature strip Libertini. And the French Colt wins the Middle Park Earthlight. Gaal has not seen another rival. He's relentless. Gaal completes a great Group 1 hat trick. Blue points to win the Kingston Stakes twice in his career. His class rises to the top in the form of microphone. His campaign, his strength, his class, I think all those things point to him being the best two-year-old in the country this season and, um, and, and I think it's deserving. Too darn hot, too darn good. And Frank will always tell you that he, you just feel him, he just gets low and he's gone. an amazing presence about him and great walk and a real athlete really. He's got his own personality but he's a joy to deal with and um, the likes of which you're chasing all the time. Gee, they're nice horses, these impendings, aren't they? Brilliant racehorse. The impendings are selling well and our clients seem to be getting in touch with us when we're buying these horses so it's, yeah, it's really good for the stable and they're nice horses. As a buyer and a trainer you want uh, tough, durable horses and impending himself, he was exactly that. Firstly, their, their quality and their strength you know, they've all got a good quality head on them, nice bit of length and strength, uh, and they're really nice moving horses. At the end of the day, the brief was to buy running horses, and we ended up on two appendix of Colton and Philly. On the bubbles, have a look at him go! Have a look at a horse that really wants it, and he's a great one now! Sarah Dest exploded to the lead with 100 to run. Sarah Dest, how impressive was that? Grabbed by ingratiating from last over the top, a big winner. Montefilia on the scene, looking to cause the upset. Montefilia is stretching, lunging, and got up to win it. Montefilia, she has to dig deep the filly, and Montefilia claims the two group ones in a week. Well, she has done something no filly has ever done. Win the flight stakes and then win the spring champion stakes. Here he comes, Animo. He let loose in a stride. A cosy victory in the English size for Animo. If, if that doesn't stamp him as one of the best two-year-old colts in the country, then I don't know what does. Do that to good quality horses in a group one, just incredible. He's a, he's a Rolls Royce of, of two-year-old racing. At 2.1 million, he goes done. If you only breed one, Choose Dali in 2021. Welcome to Kelvin Side in the Hunter Valley, home of the New South Wales Dali Stallions. We're very proud of our roster that we're standing at Dali in Australia this year, and we're very proud to showcase it. So sit back and enjoy the show. It is extremely exciting to have the world champion sprinter Bivouac joining the stallion roster at Calvin side for the 2021 breeding season. A triple group one winner, he amassed just shy of $5.7 million in prize money and all seven of his career victories came at stakes level. He was a multiple stakes winner at two, claiming the group three kindergarten stakes as well as the listed Lonro plate. Like his famous father Exceed and Excel, he was a multiple group one winner at three. He claimed the Group 1 Golden Rose in the spring, defeating Yes, 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 Exceedance and Calstel Vecchio. Yes, yes. Bivouac comes back, Bivouac fights on, and Bivouac wins the Golden Rose. And, like his father, in the autumn of his three-year-old year, he defeated the older horses in the Group 1 Newmarket Handicap up the famous Flemington Strait. Bivouac coming away for Bossy. Bivouac on the Newmarket easily. 
His two and a half length romp over loving Gabby and Gitra was rated higher than Exceed and Excel's brilliant win in the race 16 years earlier. Bivouac was crowned the champion three-year-old of his generation, and what a generation it was. His barn mate, Microphone, was part of it, as were Exceedance, Loving Gabby, Yes, 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 Calstel Vecchio, Alabama Express, Probabil, and Libertini, to name a few. His reputation and record continued to be enhanced at four. A fast finishing second to classic legend in the Everest was followed by a three length plus demolition of Nature Strip, Libertini, Zutori, Haydock, Graf, and Santa Ana Lane in the Dali Sprint Classic. Bivouac with a powerful display. Oh, what a spectacular win. Dominant four lengths deep. At year's end, his incredible achievements on the track were recognised internationally when he was crowned the world's champion sprinter for 2020. As we look at him, his attractive head and kind eye initially grab you. Then, as you watch him move, his balance and athleticism is impossible to ignore. He's extremely correct and possesses great length and strength. He simply oozes class. Godolphin has 12 mares booked to bivouac in his first season, including Epaulette and Helmet's dam accessories, Awa Cheetah, who is the mother of Golden Slipper winner Kiyomichi, and Lonro's sister Shinara. We are delighted that many of Australasia's leading breeders have purchased breeding rights in bivouac and will share what promises to be an incredibly exciting journey with us over the next few years. Bivouac stands his debut season at stud here at Kelvinside at 66,000, including GST. Ladies and gentlemen, we present Too Darn Hot. One of the most amazing and rewarding things about working for His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and Dali is the quality of horses you get to deal with. This is my 19th stallion parade at Dali. I've talked at length about horses like Lonro, Anixid and Excel, Dubawi, Shamadal, Street Cry. And it just keeps getting better. We've introduced champion racehorses to the Dali Stallion roster in the past three years. Our bases are absolutely loaded. And the best of all these brilliant prospects might just be too darn hot. He's a group one champion at two and at three. He's by Dubawi, a group one champion who's the best stallion ever in the UK and whose sons are really creating a legacy. His mother was a three times group one winning champion. Horses with these credentials are coveted animals and they make the best stallions. Dubawi had them, as did Galileo and Deep Impact and Street Cry and Kingman. It's an exclusive club of breed shaping stallions and Too Darn Hot could well be the next member. To add further depth, every one of his grandparents is a group one winner. This is a very rare occurrence in the pedigree of any thoroughbred. None of the champions I mentioned before can boast that. His pedigree is just so deep. I'll elaborate on his own ability though. At two, he was four from four, progressing from a maiden in August to a group three, a group two, and the group one championship due her stakes in just a matter of nine weeks. Looking a very special two-year-old and wins easily. At three, his brilliance was again to the four when he won the seven furlongs Prix Jean Pratt and the one mile Sussex Stakes. Whilst his pedigree might have suggested a trip of 2000 meters, his aptitude was that of a brilliant fast miler a Ferrari McLaren type, according to John Gosden, his trainer. And speed was his game. Again, Frank Editore and John Gosden, two darn hot. Good horses are not hard to promote, and everyone recognises just how good two darn hot is. That is why he filled in no time in his first season with mares from all the best breeders, and why in his second season he has been booked out since June. He covered the best quality book afforded a new stallion in Australia last year, and they are queued up again to visit him this year. Feast your eyes on Too Darn Hot. He sure is something. Then, when this show is over, go and have a look at his pedigree and race record. Then you will understand why we are all so excited about him. What a mouth watering prospect he is. At 44,000, you just can't afford to miss. Returning to Kelvin's side for his third season at Stud in Australia, is my favourite stallion, Harry Angel. He's a world champion sprinter and the highest rated sprinter to retire to stud in Britain for 30 years. He's the best son of champion sire Dark Angel at stud, a stallion that has done a phenomenal job in Europe of a very modest base. Dark Angel is currently sitting second on the general sires list by winners in Europe, ahead of such notable breed shapers as Dubawi and Frankel. 
He's sitting third by earnings. It's a sour line that's on the rise. Harry Angel made his debut in the mark of his two-year-old career at Ascot. He returned in September to win the Group 2 Mill Reef Stakes at only his second time on a racetrack, a race also won by his sire, Dark Angel. As a three-year-old, he raced in the elite company of such champion sprinters as Blue Point, Caravaggio and the Tin Man. He proved himself to be the best of the best, taking out one of the signature sprints in Europe, the Group 1 July Cup. Um, it's Harry Angel that wins the July Cup! He followed that with a victory in the Group 1 Haydock Sprint Cup, having earlier in the season won the Group 2 Sandy Lane Stakes in a track record. And Harry Angel, a class apart! Harry Angel was a front-running sprinter with a high cruising speed and an explosive turn of foot, as evident in his win in the Haydock Sprint Cup. He's a good-looking horse, he stands 15-3 and possesses great quality with a lovely head, kind eye, good length and most importantly, a lovely nature. He's an ideal outcross for the Australian broodmare band. His first wheelings have hit the market in Australia and sold well, being purchased by such notable judges as Paul Willits, Sledmere Stud and Scott Irwin. In the UK, he was responsible for the sale topping colt at the Goffs Doncaster yearling sale. The colt bred by Chiefly Park Stud was out of an Exceed and Excel mare Red Box, who sold to agent Alex Elliott for £220,000 sterling. Big call by Harry Angel at a Group 2 winning mare, Romnea. Makes him a grandson of Group 1 winning mare and producing mare, Mannington, from one of Australia's great pedigrees, which includes Bint Marsquet, Bollinger. Here we have Harry Angel filly and a stakes winning mare, Italy. She's already produced stakes place two-year-old Naples, who is one of our exciting three-year-olds for this year. Lovely athletic filly, great mover. Harry Angel has been well supported by Australian breeders in his first two seasons at Stud, including Godolphin. We have seven quality yearlings entering our system in early 2022, and if they're anything like their father, they will be fast, tough, and sound. Harry Angel is a world champion sprinter. He's an outcross. He represents excellent value, and he's standing here at Kelvin's side for a service fee of $16,500. Here for the very first time on the Calvin Side Parade lawn is Street Boss. Very few stallions have risen through the sire ranks like he has. From humble beginnings at Northwood Park, Street Boss moves to Calvin Side for his debut season in the Hunter Valley, having well and truly entrenched himself among Australia's leading stallions. A record-breaking sprinter, he is widely acclaimed as the best-looking son of the phenomenal Street Cry. He is handsome with a fantastic top line. He is built for speed, he is built for Australia. His muscular frame exudes power. Like his sire, Street Boss is free of Northern Dancer and therefore Danzig and Danehill. Importantly for breeders here in Australia, he's shown a real affinity with mares from that sire line. He's now the sire of 52 worldwide stakes winners, with his progeny claiming some of the biggest races on the planet, including the Newmarket Handicap, the Hong Kong Derby and the Kentucky Oaks. Street Boss has also gone agonisingly close to siring the winner of Australia's two most significant two-year-old Group 1 features in the past two years, with Hanseatic a narrowly beaten runner-up in last year's Blue Diamond Stakes, and Animo reeling in all bar stay inside, having been snagged back to last from the extreme outside barrier in this year's Golden Slipper. With a much kinder barrier draw at his very next start, Animo cemented his position as a future Daly Stallion with an arrogant three-length win in the Group 1 ATC size produce stakes. But a cosy victory in the English size for Animo. Make Animo is out of a Redoute's Choice mare. Hans Yattick is out of an Exceed and Excel mare, as is Elite Street, the street boss's son who claimed last year's Group 1 winter bottom stakes in Perth. And with Hong Kong champion Rapper Dragon out of a Danehill Dancer mare, Street Boss is proving to be the outstanding outcross stallion that so many breeders are looking for. He's standing his debut season here at Calvin Side at a fee of 55,000, including GST. Here is the flagship stallion of the Darley Stallion roster. Champion sire Exceed and Excel, standing his 18th season at stud here at Kelvin Side. He's the sire of 16 Group 1 winners. No two are out of mares by the same broodmare sire. He's also the sire of 187 stakes winners and 95 group winners. That's impressive by any standard. 
He is Dane Hill's most successful stallion when it comes to global stakes winners and is the most prolific son of the great stallion in terms of runners and winners across his 17 seasons in Australia and 15 in the UK. With 1,591 winners, he sits just 32 behind his sire. With a new crop of two-year-olds coming through, we're confident he'll hit that milestone very soon. He has seven sons currently at stud in Australia, including our own Young Guns, Microphone and Bivouac. And as if that's not impressive enough, he's the broodmare sire of four more young stallions in Astern, Encryption, Hanseatic and Tassort. His influence will be felt for many years to come. Exceed and Excel is the world's best sire of two-year-olds ever. The only stallion in history to sire the winners of the Golden Slipper, Coolmore Stud Stakes, Newmarket Handicap, ATC Sars Produce, Blue Diamond, Caulfield Guineas, and the Golden Rose. He sires quality runners who win quality races. His progeny are still delivering the goods in the sales ring. The Exceed and Excel cult out of Dreamforce, consigned by Vinery, sold to Tony Fung Investments for 2.1 million at Easter this year. Vinery were also responsible for selling the Exceed and Excel cult out of Sanity to the same purchaser for $1,050,000. He's a champion sire, a champion broodmare sire, a breed shaper, and he stands here at Kelvin's side for a service fee of $132,000. Ladies and gentlemen, we present Microphone. Every so often in Australia, a group of exceptional gallopers comes along. Gallopers that progress from their own age group into the wait for age arena. The best juveniles of these crop invariably leave a big impression on the breed. I'm talking about crops that featured the likes of Redoute's Choice, Testarossa and Command, or Schnitzel, Stratum and Ridden Tycoon. Or Piero and All Too Hard. The 2019 crop was a crop like one of those, possibly even deeper. Microphone, the horse parading now, was the best two-year-old in that 2019 crop. His peers included the likes of Bivouac, Exceedance, Yes, 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 and Castelvecchio, all commanding proper fees at high profile studs. And the year also included the fillies, Probabil and Loving Gabby, proven group one wait for age performers against the Colts. Microphone was the champion two-year-old of 2019. Not just champion in any year, champion in an elite year. Deep out, microphone from Castelvecchio, and Microphone's won it. Microphone's won the English size from by the loving Gabby who flew, and Castelvecchio... The microphone also has the pedigree to succeed. He's by Exceed and Excel. You know how good Exceed is. Champion sire, worldwide influence, a breed shaper. The best sire of two-year-olds ever. He certainly has a claim to carry on his father's line. Many of the best breeders in Australia secured lifetime breeding rights in Microphone last year, and to say that their reports coming in on his first foals are encouraging is understating it. Great heads, great quality, great strength, correct. That is the common theme. Here is the Microphone Zumbai filly. Just seven days old now, out in the paddock. Going very well, lovely head on her, good frame and depth, nice foal. Microphone has the weight of some serious, astute and successful commercial breeders behind him. He also has all the advantages the powerful Godolphin racing team can give a stallion. He is brilliantly placed to etch his name into the history books as yet another champion stallion from the remarkable Dane Hill line. Microphone stands this season at $38,500 at Kelvin side. Ladies and gentlemen, we present a brilliant Group 1 winner whose first progeny are really starting to look the goods. This is a Stern. He is, of course, a home bred for Godolphin. By the American bred stallion Medaglia Doro, a successful sire in both hemispheres, and he is from an absolute blue hen mare, Esawira, a daughter of Exceed and Excel and the dam of triple Group 1 winner, Elise. A Stern was a brilliant racehorse himself, winning the Golden Rose, the Silver Slipper, the Run to the Rose, and the Kindergarten Stakes. And he ran second in the important Coolmore Stud Stakes at the end of a long three-year-old spring campaign. He was hot property when he retired to stud in 2017. A Stern's oldest progeny have just embarked on their three-year-old careers. They look progressive. The unbeaten Sarah Des was a convincing two-year-old stakes winner for Mark and Levi Kavanagh and will be heading towards a thousand guineas. 
In New Zealand, another impressive stakes winner was Danger Strikes for Tony Pike. She'll be headed for the 1,000 guineas in New Zealand. Chris Waller has a highly rated Davina for star thoroughbreds, and fellow New South Wales trainer Jean Dubois and Ed Cummings are super keen about their impressive winners by a stern. The Godolphin team have always rated our colt Brigantine, who stamped himself a spring player with a brilliant first up win on the Kensington track at Randwick recently. And given the esteem Brigantine is held in, the racing team are absolutely delighted to have 10 two-year-olds from a Stern's second crop entering the stables to race in the next few months. I'm sure there's a lot to look forward to there. Blue battling on, then Siriani and Bolsonaro, but Sarah Des, how impressive was that? A Stern's popularity has been increasing with every new winner, and we expect this to continue. In what looks to be an exceptional crop of young stallions, he was one of four to sire multiple stakes winners, the others being Frosted, Capitalist, and Extreme Choice. And now that they've turned three, he could be the one to go on with it. At $16,500, he looks extremely good value. Next up is Territories, the good-looking son of Invincible Spirit from the immediate family of Shamardal and Streetcry. It is these good looks passed on to his progeny that saw him cover his largest book here at Kelvin Side last season. Territories was a top-class two-year-old. He won a Chanty over six furlongs before running an unlucky second in France's top two-year-old race, the Prix Jean-Luc Lagardère at Longchamp, a race also won by such notable stallions as Wooden Bassett and Sayuni. He ran second in the 2000 Guineas as a three-year-old to Glen Eagles, already a five-time Group 1 winner. But it was his victory in the Group 1 Prix Jean Pratt later that season that was his most impressive win, when he came from last with a tremendous turn of foot to seal victory. His yearlings continue to sell well in the sale ring. Going for 350,000. His first crop yearlings averaged 11 times his service fee, and his second crop sold well also, to average 87,500. His progeny are in all the best stables, so he'll be given every opportunity. The best is yet to come for Territories. He's back for his fifth season at Kelvin Side, standing at a service fee of $11,000. This is shooting to win. This powerful chestnut stallion could be on the verge of something quite big. As a son of the flying northern meteor and its speedster dam and listen here, shooting to win looks to be developing into a really useful, versatile stallion, throwing some to his pedigree, others more in the miler mold as he was himself. Many of his best horses look fast and are fast. In Godolphin's care, we have the brilliant Tellier. In Adelaide, Leon McDonald and Andrew Gluyas have the stakes winning extra time. Graham Rogerson has Group 1 placed Mascarpone coming over from New Zealand to contest the big sprints here this spring. Shooting for gold, unbeaten this time in in Queensland, looks a really nice horse for owner breeder Joe Rapazada. Others include Miss Catherine, brilliant around the valley in the Typhoon Tracy Stakes a couple of seasons ago, and Intrepidacious, a 575,000 race mare sold at the Gold Coast earlier this year. West Australians Dom Tushus and Charlton Eddy, as well as Mystery Shot and Group 1 placed Kubrick, are more in the mould of the miler that their father was. Of course, he won the Caulfield Guineas. One thing is very apparent. Shooting to Win has high-class Saturday metropolitan runners all around the country, from Queensland, WA, South Australia, Victoria, and New South Wales. You see them every weekend. And with metropolitan prize money the way it is at the moment, breeding to this son of Northern Meteor at just $11,000 makes perfect sense. Here is the national treasure, Lonro. It'll be a long time before we see a stallion reach Lonro's dizzy heights on the racetrack. In fact, we may never. 26 career wins, 11 at Group 1 level. The only horse of the year and champion stallion standing at stud in Australia. Lonro has left an indelible mark on the Australian thoroughbred industry and his legacy continues to grow. He's closing in on 1,000 individual winners of over 3,000 races. Among them are 91 stakes winners who amazingly have claimed their stakes victories in Australia, New Zealand, America, the UK, Hong Kong, Dubai, South Africa, Canada, Macau, and Malaysia. It is fair to say 
his greatness has been far reaching. Lonru is proving equally as exceptional as a broodmare sire, with 38 of his daughters now responsible for stakes winners. Amazingly, five of the 14 runners that faced the starter in February's Blue Diamond Stakes were out of daughters of Lonro. A terrific achievement for him. His sire sons at stud include our very own rising star in Pending, as well as Piero, Denman and Encryption, among others. Lonro's yearling sold for up to 550,000 this year and his global reach was highlighted in July at the Japanese foal sale where a Lonro colt was knocked down for the equivalent of 500,000 Australian dollars. He is truly an amazing animal who we are privileged to stand here at Calvin side where he commands a fee of 66,000 including GST. Earthlight by the great Shamadal out of the two-year-old winning Group 1 placed New Approach Mare Winter's Moon. He was an unbeaten dual Group 1 winning two-year-old. Think about that and how rare and exceptional that truly is. He went to the races five times at two, won all five, including the Group 1 pre morning over 1,200 metres at Deauville, before heading over to England to break the track record in the Group 1 Middle Park Stakes Earthlight at Newmarket. Get there from Golden Horde and the French Colt wins the Middle Park Earthlight from Golden Horde. He continued his winning ways as a three-year-old saluting twice before finishing a very close second at Group 1 level over 1,400 metres. Trained by Andre Farb, the exceptionally talented Earthlight retired with the wonderful record of seven wins from nine starts. He was the champion two-year-old colt in France in 2019. His physical appearance perfectly matches his precocious race record. Mid-size, strong, powerful, fantastic hindquarter, short cannons, deep girth. Add to that a wonderful relaxed temperament and a great walk. A champion two-year-old, an unbeaten two-year-old, an 1100 metre to 1200 metre two-year-old, a stallion that will get you a two-year-old. Earthlight stands at 22,000, including GST. Our next horse is the exceptionally good-looking Kermadec. New to Victoria this season, he is the epitome of equine perfection. He exudes quality. Have a look at his handsome head, great length of rein, and his beautiful sloping shoulder and deep girth. He is short-backed, yet he has good scope, and not to mention plenty of hip. He's a beautiful mover and extremely correct. And best of all, he is consistently producing these qualities in his progeny. 180,000, 270,000, 280,000, 300,000, 520,000. These are some of the prices that the Kermadec yearlings have realised in the last three years, and the list goes on. The phenomenal prices haven't just been for his yearlings either. This year, he had a $300,000 weanling at the Gold Coast as well. All from a stallion that has never stood for more than $20,000. Exceptional value. Kermadec was a standout racehorse, winning the time-honoured Group 1 Doncaster as a three-year-old, beating the older horses. Wilder sense dying on his run, and it's Kermadec. Kermadec scores a great win from Real Impact. He continued to make his mark as a four-year-old when most of the other good colts of his crop went to stud. It was then that he won another major mile race, the Group 1 George Main Stakes, and was rated the top colt of his generation, second only to the Great Winks. He was a genuine Group 1 horse, running in 10 Group 1s over his career and in the money in all bar two of them. He has made an amazing start to his breeding career, producing dual Group 1 winning filly, Montefilia, in his first crop. Not to mention highly talented stakes horse, Commanding, and the very promising Tuvalu, amongst others. He has been well supported by Team Godolphin, and over the last two years, he covered 20 of our own mares, including stakes winning or producing mares, Purple, A Forethought, Ottoman, and Rock Dove. His average earnings per runner exceeds that of his own outstanding sire, Teofilo, at the same time in their careers at stud. And we all know how good Teofilo became. He's a multiple Group 1 winner, 
who's thrown a multiple group one winner in his first crop and he gets you a sales product. He's standing at Northwood Park for 11,000, including GST. Without doubt, he's one of the best value stands in the country. Imagine being lucky enough to breed or own a filly like Montefilia. Let's hear from her trainer, David Payne. Uh, Montefilia, come back in great, great order. She's given her owner such a wonderful ride at this stage and uh, we expect her to carry on. She's a much stronger filly now physically and uh, I really think she's going to have a good preparation. As you can see how she's filled out, she's a big strong girl now and uh, very pleased the way she's working. So we're hoping for a very good preparation. Our next horse out is the highest rated horse in the world in 2020, Gayath. He's the best ever son of breed shaping stay in Dubawi. There aren't many stayings to come to stud in Australia with the profile this horse has, and we are very proud to have a horse of his calibre standing his first season here at Northwood Park in Victoria. Before he ruled the world, Gayath was the highest priced colt foal of his generation, a 1.1 million euro purchase who quickly made his mark winning two races at two, including the Autumn Stakes at Newmarket in stakes record time. As an older horse, he really hit his straps and went on to win not only four Group 1 races, he also posted three of the top four time form performances of 2020. He outclassed the champion Enable in the Group 1 Eclipse Stakes. Enable is running out of time and it's Gareth who's going to take the Coral Eclipse. Gareth has won the Eclipse, tight second between Enable and Japan. And smashed Magical and Lord North in the Group 1 Judmont International. Seen another rival and he's going to see them all off here in the Judmont. He's relentless. Gareth completes a great Group 1 hat trick. To quote Charlie Appleby, he had speed, he had tactical pace and he could stay. He is an absolutely awesome athlete who made seemingly light work of his rivals. He's out of the Blue Hen Mare and Group 1 winning daughter of Galileo, Nighttime, and is a half-brother to champion Philly Zakova. Clearly champions run in the blood. Physically, a 1.1 million euro price tag tells you that he is an outstanding type. He's deep through the shoulder and girth and moves beautifully over the ground. He is balanced, athletic, has a beautiful head and a very intelligent eye. He has a real presence and quality about him. Gaeth is bred on the same cross as Knight of Thunder, who in his first few crops has made an unbelievable impact in recent years. He stands his first season at Northwood Park for 27,500, including GST, and is fully booked. Impending. Everything about him is impressive. Physically so impressive. He's handsome. All class, athletic, strong, powerful, and most notable, he has that wonderful movement. His pedigree is so impressive. By the great Lonro, a champion, a sire of sires, out of Nemesin, a dual group one winning in Costa Lago Mare. His race record is so impressive. A two-year-old winner, a group one and group two winner at three, a Group 1 and Group 2 winner at four, and the winner of over 2.4 million in prize money. His progeny looks so impressive. He had a terrific sales series, with seven yearlings selling between 200 and 250,000. His most exciting may well be those not offered at public auction, with upcoming two-year-old Colts out of Group 1 winning mares, Guelph and Jamaica, pleasing their trainers, Cummings and Ma. Impending colt. He's finished his cancer work. You see, it's a good size, nice bone, great attitude, nice and relaxed. Very professional about anything he does at the moment. He enjoys his work. He has covered over 500 mares in his first three seasons at stud and is well represented in the leading stables. Impending. The ultimate pedigree. A dual Group 1 winner by a Group 1 winner, out of a Group 1 winner, a sprinter, an outcross, good looking, athletic, a wonderful mover, gets a sales yearly. He's fully booked and he stands at 22,000, including GST. Next up, Brazen Bow. What a racehorse. 
He is still the best performed son of the great I'm Invincible and is fulfilling all of our expectations as a champion sire in the making. Brazen Bow himself was a stakes winning two year old, a dual group one winner at three and crowned champion three year old Colt when he won the group two Roman Consul, the group one Coolmore Stud Stakes and a massive win in the group one Newmarket Handicap. He was the outstanding sprinting Colt in Australia and went on to prove himself on the world stage when he was a tragedy beaten for second in the Group 1 Diamond Jubilee at Royal Ascot. From his first three crops to race in the Southern Hemisphere, he's produced 10 stakes winners and five stakes horses. This is on par with our very own champion, Exceed and Excel, at the same time in his career. Amongst his peers, with an oldest crop of four-year-olds, he's clearly the leading stallion by percentage of stakes winners to runners. He has sired 11 two-year-old stakes horses, including Larimer Street, North Pacific, Ideas Man, and his newest stars, the Group 1 winner On The Bubbles, an extremely fast and precocious multiple stakes winning juvenile cult, General Bow. The Godolphin team have supported him strongly year on year, and this year we're looking forward to following down 16 mares, including Shannara, the full sister to Lonro, Laburnum, the stakes winning filly from the family of Animo, Black Opal stakes winner Pinsec, Leopard, the half sister to a Stern and Elise, and the stakes winner and producer Palomares, who is also a three quarter sister to Earthquake. Serious mares for what we consider a serious stallion. Have a look at him. He's all power and all speed. He has a strong masculine jowl, great strength in his shoulders, and a massive hind quarter. Super strength in his forearms and Gaskin and lovely short cannons. You can see why he's throwing these fast, powerful juvenile winners. He also gets you a sales horse. 450,000 for Larimer Street. 550,000 for Midland. 700,000 for Pretty Brazen. 800,000 for North Pacific. And a top price of 1.15 million in the sales ring. The market loves them. Brazen Bow, he's a champion by a champion. He's producing Group 1 horses, stakes winning juveniles, and he's passing on his good looks. He's the complete package. He stands for 49,500, including GST. And unsurprisingly, he is fully booked again this season. Blue Point. Gee, I love this horse. I love that he's by Shamadal and looks like Shamadal. I love that he was a gun two-year-old winning the Group 2 gym crack and being runner-up in both the Group 1 Middle Park and Group 1 Dewhurst Stakes. I love that he trained on to be a four-time Group 1 winner. That he won the races that matter to Australian breeders. The Alquaz Sprint in Dubai, a race won by the likes of Buffering and Hortensia. Back-to-back -back King stands at Royal Ascot. In front, Bashar's nearest to us, trying to get to him, but it's the same as last year. Blue point from Batash. A race won by the likes of Takeover Target, Schwarzia, Miss Andretti, and Scenic Blast. And the Diamond Jubilee, also won by Black Caviar, Star Spangled Banner, and Merchant Navy. I love that he's the only horse to win three Group 1 sprints at Royal Ascot. I love that he was a sprinter, a 1,000 metre to 1,200 metre horse. I love that he won races at two, three, four, and five, and won 11 races in total. To race at the elite level for four consecutive seasons is a rare beast. I love him as a type. Actually, everyone that sees him loves him physically. Athletic, a terrific mover, deep, strong shoulder, fantastic hip, that kind eye, a great colour. I loved that our best breeders used him, fully booked in 2020 by Australia's and New Zealand's best breeders in his first season at stud. He covered 37 stakes winners and 21 stakes producing mares. I love that the might of Godolphin is behind him. Mares covered in 2020 include the Dams of Animo, Savitiano, Elise in a Stern, Heresy, as well as the likes of Slipper winner, Forensics, Memorial, and Anise. And that is backed up in 2021 with bookings again to the Dam of Savitiano, as well as the Dams of Bivouac and Piero. Blue Point, how could you not love him? Physically outstanding, 
precocious, fast, tough, sound, talented, by the right sire, the winner of the right races, supported by the right breeders with the right mares. He stands at 44,000, including GST. Beautifully athletic, an exceptional mover, and above all, a Group 1 winning sprinter, this is Holler. He's a two-year-old city winner, a four-length winner at group level on Cox Plate Day as a spring three-year-old, and then returned in the autumn, announcing himself as one of the premier sprinters in the country. He won the Group 2 Australia Stakes at Wait for Age. Still dancer and Holler in front, he'll win. Holler scores. Holler by nearly a length. A great photo for the Miners. Before heading to Sydney to win the Group 1 Canterbury Stakes at Wait for Age also. the middle part of the track, but the bird's flown. Holler's going to lead all the way. Holler from First Seal and Kermadec. It's an important race on the calendar and has been won by the likes of Piero, More Joyous, Le Romain, Happy Clapper and Trapeze Artist. That campaign featured two wait for age wins and a close second, and across those three races, he defeated 10 individual Group 1 winners. He was on speed and he made his own luck, and that seems to be the profile that works for Aussie sprinting stallion prospects. He was a three-year-old sprinter that beat the older horses at Group 1 level. So did Snitzel, Fastnet Rock, Redoute's Choice, Exceed and Excel, Encosta de Lago, and Flying Spur, all champion stallions. Physically, he is a horse that appeals on inspection as well. He has a great temperament, is handsome, has size and strength, and above all that, beautiful movement. Holler has a stallion's pedigree. He's from the family of proven sire Ritten Tycoon and our very own second season sire and champion two-year-old colt, Microphone. His yearlings at the sales have impressed. They are great types, have lovely temperaments, and are exceptional movers, just like their sire. They have sold for up to eight times his service fee and were bought by prominent stables, including Mick Price, Mike Moroni, Ellerton Zara, Lloyd Kennywell, John McArdle and Will Clarkin. His recent winner, Obfuscation, looks like an exciting spring prospect for the Mick Price, Michael Kent Jr. stable. Holler is an impressive, Group 1 winning, colonial sprinter from the Danehill line, standing at unbelievable value at 7,700, including GST. Frosted, what an amazing horse. Good looking, striking, he has presence and quality, and above all was an unbelievable racehorse. A triple group one winner. He raced at two, three and four, and amassed close to US four million in prize money. He won the stallion making group one Met Mile by 14 lengths in 132 and change. Extraordinary. He was a special racehorse, a cult hero, Frosted is the best son of the great Tappet, a phenomenal breed shaping and three-time champion stallion in America. Frosted, a triple group one winning racehorse by a champion stallion. Is it any wonder he has started so well? In the US, he is currently leading second season sire. Here in Australia, he is off to a great start, led by Gun Colt Ingratiating, a triple stakes winner, and placed in both the Blue Diamond and Golden Slipper, as well as star filly Cloudy, herself a multiple stakes winner. Both of these were brilliant Godolphin juveniles, trained by James Cummings, and we are lucky enough to hear from his Flemington assistant, Sean Keogh. Hi all, it's Sean Keogh here from Carbon Lodge. This afternoon we're having a look at Ingratiating. Ingratiating is a son of Frosted. He's from his first crop. Ingratiating was an exceptional two-year-old. He was a dual stakes winner. He was placed in both the Blue Diamond and the Golden Slipper. Since returning as a three-year-old, he's strengthened up. And he's got a great mind also, this horse. He's matured mentally very good. And we've seen that dominance that he displayed in the Van Stakes. We're very much looking forward to ingratiating as he progresses into the spring. Given Frosted was an elite three and four year old performer, particularly from 1600 metres to 1800 metres, we expect his progeny to get even better. Frosted yearlings are well received in the sale ring and have sold to 650,000. Frosted, by a champion stallion, a triple group one winner, a record holder, an outcross with a gun colt in his first crop.
He is fully booked and stands at 44,000, including GST. Thanks for taking the time to watch our stallion parade. These are proper horses, all of them Group 1 winners. And we are very proud of the roster we have put together in New South Wales and Victoria. When the opportunity does arise for you to come to the farm and see them in the flesh, please contact a member of our nominations team. Best of luck for the season.